Okay, hello. Uh, yeah, I don't use a microphone, so I presume you can hear me. My name is Artyom Mezin. Uh, yeah, it's me, more or less. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a guy who roughly a year ago uh, bought an Alexa Dot and said to my wife, like, are we gonna have it just because it can be programmed by JavaScript and I'm a JavaScript developer, I can do it. Yeah, a year passed and she asked, like, and what? <laughs> we, we have this thing and what's next? Uh, I said, uh, okay, nothing happened really, but uh, roughly, how much, like two weeks probably, yeah, uh, things have changed. Uh, you probably should recognize this picture. Uh, does anybody understand what, what, what is this about? Yeah, for sure. You see, um, it's the reach of the virus like by region and what is, is that Asia? Uh, yeah, exactly. So, so many rumors, like uh, things, uh, information around the all media channels about the coronavirus. And occasionally I found myself like constantly updating the garden and looking for numbers, features, like how many people are getting ill. And so like, so it's like uh, okay, well, why? Why do you do this, man? <laughs> like, what's the point is? Uh, can you automate the routine? <laughs> can you get this number easily? <laughs> uh, apparently, yes, I, uh, I could. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the dashboard created by John Hopkins University. The guys, they did a great job. Uh, it's constantly going down because of the load, because it became popular. Uh, and I was curious about the data, for sure, not about the representation, but about the data. And uh, from my perspective, if you look at the data itself, uh, it's not so bad. It's definitely better than you, when you're looking at the Guardian or BBC or whatever media you prefer. Uh, and if you can get the pure data, probably your life will be easy. I don't know, at least my my can be, I believe. Yeah, uh, as I said, I have an Alexa dot and decided to just create a simple app, simple Alexa skill, uh, which I can ask Alexa, uh, tell me the virus news, yeah, and get this data. Uh, I, I, I'll try later to do a small demo, you, you will see. Uh, let it be a dialogue, if you don't mind, because I'm, I'm not really prepared. Uh, does anybody want me to uh, go deeper into the Alexa skills topology, how does it work, like what is this about? I, I don't trust you. <laughs> Any, anybody not from the organizers team? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, the idea, uh, actually it looks like the web, uh, like the internet, which we deserve. Uh, it has a front end and back end, and front end is like your voice. You can simply ask Alexa, like Alexa, the keyword, and then something, something. Yeah? Uh, all magic is happening on the Amazon site and your backend, which is a normal web backend. It can be uh, apparently a serverless function, uh, it can be a simple uh, server. Uh, gets just a JSON file, JSON input, nothing more. And the Alexa, in my case, yeah, Alexa voice service uh, expects from you to get the JSON back. It's deadly simple. <laughs> uh, so your JSON can, uh, can, should contain the text, like plain text, what Alexa dot uh, supposed to pronounce. Uh, yeah, don't really want to explain how to do the hello world because there are so many articles around the web uh, where I described and if you google LNAC Alex uh, something, you're gonna find a brilliant talk which been delivered probably last year, right? Just brilliant talk which covers all the things. I'm trying to tell about like snacks, I don't know, pitfalls, gotchas, or something. Yeah, you have a link. If, you, if you're interested in how to do it, you have a link. Uh, oops, yeah, but how to design the, the app itself? I, as I said, uh, you need to communicate with uh, Alex uh, uh, skill, skill kit by uh, sending and getting, getting and sending uh, JSONs. Uh, the most like fastest thing that you can do is a serverless function, for sure. And the thing is that you can do everything in your browser. Yeah, like you go to Amazon, you type like I want to do an Alexa skill, 
they say, yes, okay, sure. That's the skill, that's the editor, you can edit your code there. Just don't do this. Just don't trust them. For sure you can do it in browser, but uh, you will suffer a lot. <laughs> yeah, try to do everything in a proper way, like a programmer, like try to understand how the things uh, um, happen in, in the AWS, how to upload uh, several X functions there, just don't use the web interface, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, yeah, and my idea was, okay, I, theoretically, I can get data somewhere, yeah? And I can uh, download this data, like pull this data in an hourly basement uh, and upload to the DynamoDB uh, table, yeah? And each time when my user, yeah, if I'm gonna have any users, uh, ask Alexa to do something, my, the second function of mine gonna get a JSON input uh, and I go to the DynamoDB table and uh, return the features about the coronavirus. And basically that's it. That was the idea. Uh, I believe it was the right idea because it took me about six hours to implement all, all the stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna share the code if you don't mind today. Uh, yeah, but the data, the first gotcha is where to get the data. Uh, nowadays GitHub, it's a powerful, powerful network uh, network for getting any kind of insights, data, raw data, I don't know, libraries, for sure, for sure the code, but data itself. Uh, and these guys from the John Hopkins University uh, created uh, a community around, uh, around the scene. Like they combined all the data all together, they frequently uh, updated this data, and uh, it started like two weeks ago from the simple, ah, it's not a long uh, case, yeah. It started from the simple uh, Google spreadsheet, which also, a parsable thing, yeah? But then, uh, under the, some pressure from the community, they switched to GitHub repository and start providing us with uh, normal data. Uh, but normal problem, not the case. First pitfall that I get in, got in was the format. Like, look, guys, it's a, a WHO, World Health Organization, quite serious in my understanding organization, and look at the uh, format that they, that they provide. It's a province, states, yeah. Don't you see that it's something wrong? <laughs> and we really lived for, I don't know, for uh, maybe a couple of days with, with this format. Well, Beijing and confirmed, it's pretty much the same thing. But yeah, it is what it is. Again, GitHub, uh, GitHub made Things perfect, like people just um, convinced owners that w w what is wrong, how to change the format. Uh, people make a lo made lots of pull requests, like suggestions, Python tools, and so on. So on. Look, it's it's amazing. Like to be a part of this community it, it, itself, it's a thing. It's it's an amazing thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, the next gotcha is about storing the data, like Amazon DB again, uh, Dy DynamoDB again. It's a well popular, well known uh, solution. Lots of information about it. But the first and probably the most important thing that you should know about this is that you should think in advance. It's very very important uh, to think how you're gonna store the data. What is your schema will be before you start doing something. For example, it's not possible simple just simply just sort all the entries in your table. So you should you should sort by primary key. I mean, uh, you should think about it in advance when you when you're designing something. My first idea was okay. My primary key is a timestamp. I got I get all the data into the row and I'm good. I'm not. Uh, well, I, I am good because I can still can retrieve all the data and sort it uh, in my runtime because. It's not a big amount of data, but um, it doesn't look like a proper way of doing things. Uh, yeah, so put some efforts on DynamoDB stuff if you gonna do something like this. Uh, the next gotcha is about routine. I already said it, like uh, you are able to create 
serverless Lambda function just in the web interface, just don't do this. Uh, AWS provides you with a powerful, really powerful uh, CLI instruments that can help you with everything from deploying to testing. Like you can run your functions, you can um, uh, deploy your function, you can package your fun functions, like all this stuff. And as, as far as these uh, tools are CLI tools, you can do it on um, CI, on the CI side easily. If you invest just a little bit efforts in the beginning on this part, uh, you will not regret, just trust me. Uh, it, even, even given the fact that it seems easier just to type some JavaScript in web interface and forget about it. Uh, yeah, there are, there are a couple of CLI tools provides us, uh, which, which AWS provides us with. Um, I like Sam, personally. <laughs> First of all, because it's, it has cool, yeah, logo, but, uh, secondly, because it, allows you to run your functions in the same environment, in the same container that's, be, that's going to be used in the production site. It's, it's cool. Uh, yeah, then how it works. And just a little bit of a demo. Uh, you created a project. Uh, the project looks like this. Uh, basically, what you need to do, you need to define what the invocation name of your Alexa skill is. The next gotcha is Think about it twice. Like think about DynamoDB schema twice and about this thing twice because you will not, uh, you will not be able to change it. Like you, you, you need to redeploy the entire application, application to change the invocation name. Then, yeah, it's quite important. Uh, okay. And you define like what your user is going to say to get the information and you're good. Uh, then you just look in your code for this intent and respond properly. Responds properly. Um, the funny thing is that um, Alexa is quite sensitive for accents, particularly for my accent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Mm, I'm not sure that if I say something like Alexa virus news, it's going to respond to me something. But I can type it. <laughs> uh, yay. Ah. 18,415 confirmed cases. Exactly. 27,905 people yeah. recovered. Enough. 2,708 cases. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, basically you, you, you got probably the point. Like I retrieve the data, I organize the data in uh, the latest numbers uh, across the world and return as a, as, a, as a JSON in a proper format. Um, it's more like proof of concept. Like uh, also I want to uh, share the advice, like the pieces of advice, like uh, recommendations from World Health Organization, what to do, how to protect yourself. Basically, do you know what is the uh, most popular advice from them? What we, wash, uh, did, did you wash your hands before eating pizza? Yes, <laughs> yes I did. <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently it is. Uh, and this is the next pitfall, the next gotcha. Like I decided, okay, I'm going to share recommendations, it's a World Health Organization recommendations, and not so easy. Um, it's not so easy because Amazon doesn't like the idea to share any health-related recommendations. It took two days uh, for review process, and eventually I was, like, kicked off. <laughs> they, they, they didn't like the idea to share any kind of recommendations with no uh, disclaimer. Then, now I have to add a disclaimer to my description that it's just a recommendation uh, and pass it over to them again. Uh, yeah, the next pitfall, think twice, read, read this probably, policy testing, before, before, you're doing, before you're doing Alexa skills. It's going to save you, you some time. Uh, why it's so important, like why, why the verification process is so important? Because uh, you can have only two versions of your Alexa skills at the moment, like the production Alexa skill 
and the Alexa skill in, in development. If I send this Alexa, this version to review, yeah, this, I, I, I just have to wait uh, until the result. I cannot do it constantly. Well, another, let's say, insight that I got from this story. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we can, if you don't mind, let, let me try, like, uh, if I'm going to test it in development, it should work, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Alexa, ask virus news, what can I do? Avoid touching eyes, nose and mouth. <laughs> exactly. It, it works, but it works only in development. I still cannot pass the review process, but I will. Will do. Uh, yeah. Uh, why I'm doing this? Like, I really think it's, it can help some people. At least it can help to set up routine, maybe for kids. But again, don't mention kids on your Alexa, uh, <laughs> Alexa skill description. If you mention it, you have to mark your skill as a kit oriented and go to the really long, like say, red corridor <laughs> for reviewing. Uh, but it, it should help. Like I have in mind like a couple of ideas what to do. Uh, I will speak about it a little bit later. But, but one of these ideas is, okay, uh, I'm asking Alexa what to do. She responded to me like, wash your hands. And then she asked like, do you want me to set up a reminder? <laughs> and yeah, it, technically it's possible, but I, uh, you need time to implement it. And I think it, it, it might be a useful tool for, for a kid, probably. Uh, and yeah, as I said, if you read the news, you probably got something, but no features, but no numbers. And here you can get just the numbers, especially if we can implement something uh, on analytic size, like how bad is it, like is it going better, is it going worse? Uh, I believe it can help. Uh, yeah, what, what could be done? It's actually, this talk is more about promoting rather than about teaching someone. Like if you speak Italian <laughs> uh, and really want to, to do the thing, like speak to me, we add Italian language uh, because Alexa support Alexa skills supports uh, a number of languages. Yeah, and you need to implement just one uh, skill and do some internalization stuff. It's also fun from technical perspective, but probably uh, would be would be interested uh, in in like in the current situation. Yeah, we can add more info. Like, uh, it's not only about getting features. It's about, yeah, wash your hands. It's about um, not to squeeze and any kind of information can be useful, I believe. Why, why not? Uh, data analysis, if you just really obsessed about the numbers and you can get from this table with wonderful formatting uh, information, is it going better or is it going worse? for a particular region, why not? Uh, let's add it to, to the task, um, to the skill. Uh, features, everybody loves inventing features. Like this is the most like adorable thing in our job, I believe. Uh, so if you, if you have some and want to share, I don't mind to speak to you also. Uh, educational functions. Uh, recently I spent a week in my home country in Belarus and unfortunately uh, over there there is a scene like people basically, people basically are scary about Asians people. It's, it's horrible. They just, they, they really don't want to go into the same bus with a guy of Asian nationality. Like it's, what? Uh, and that's another point why I'm doing it. Like, I do believe that if you share the information about it, it can help. Um, 
Yeah, and tech depth, it's about me. Like, I talked a lot about automation, but unfortunately, I didn't do it. <laughs> like, it, it's not done, still it's not done. I can deploy, for example, one of my functions, and another is deployed manually. Uh, yeah, it still need to do. Uh, about pitfalls, I told during the talk, but probably I missed something. Verification can be tough. Yeah, it is tough. True. Uh, one version in a time. Think twice before send the skill to the verification. And the last but not least, the statefulness. If you're going to deliver a dialogue with Alexa, it's a scene like itself. Um, it's not so easy because you don't have like a proper browser with cookies and something. You need to play a little bit with this JSON that you get from the Amazon. But it's still possible. Uh, yeah, the end is near. <laughs> Brilliant.